How's it going Starseekers, Got Cake here, and today's video is going to be something a little different, as I'm going to be covering off a trio of games that I didn't quite manage to get in full reviews for, due to me being mega busy last month with both the channel and real life, and I think it'd be a shame not to mention some of the other titles I played and give you my thoughts and recommendations on them. So without further ado, let's get into this roundup and see what's what. So first up we have one of my favourite games of the 90s, Oddworld Abe's Odyssey, which has been remade from the ground up and re-released as Oddworld New and Tasty. The game sees you controlling Abe, previously a lowly Mudokan janitor at the meat processing plant Rupture Farms. Abe now finds himself a fugitive on the run after discovering the factory's new and tasty recipe features Abe and his fellow Madokans as the main ingredient. Now the game originally released back in 2014 for the PlayStation 4 and it just hit the Switch eShop last month. If you've never played either Abe's Odyssey or its follow up Abe's Exodus then here's a basic rundown of the main game mechanics. You begin in Rupture Farms and after fleeing from the guards your job is then to find a way out. Levels in the game are often broken down into multiple screens which are traversed between either by doorways or portals, and within each level you are usually tasked with solving a number of different puzzles. These can involve things such as getting past enemies by either killing them in a number of different ways, or by sneaking past them on your tiptoes or by hiding in smoke, or other times there are explosive mines that you have to disarm, scanners which you need to remain still through to avoid tripping the security systems, and a number of different platforming challenges which often involve hazards such as falling meat. Now while the game generally follows a linear format, the player is still afforded decisions on how they want to play the game. Along the way there are 299 fellow Madokans that you're able to free from captivity, with different endings to the game rewarded depending on how many you manage to rescue, but working out how to free the Madokans is only part of the challenge as some of them are hidden away in secret areas. Now Abe is able to communicate both verbally to give commands to the Madokans telling them to follow him or stay put, and later in the game he has to communicate communicate with tribes in a more crude manner involving whistles and farts. He's also able to chant to open portals for Madokans to escape through or ones leading to secret areas, and his chant can also be used to possess guards and take control of them, using them to shoot up the buddies or clear mines out of the way. Now New and Tasty spans a number of different environments, from the factories of Rupture Farms and its moonlit stockyards, to Oddworld's temple areas full of tribesmen, and sections involving the ugly but adorable Elam, who can be ridden like an ugly miniature horse. An average run of the game will take around 10 hours first time round, plus a good few hours more if you want to rescue all Madokans. I personally had a fun time playing New and Tasty, and while it's not quite as good as OG Oddworld, it brought back a lot of good memories and frustrations with them, mainly due to the game's controls which are a little better in New and Tasty, but can still be pretty painful from time to time. So far as the game's visuals go, all the cutscenes have been remastered and the game looks pretty good on the Switch. I only experienced some minor slowdown on a couple of occasions, but nothing major. The game's audio also sounds great with remakes of all the classic Abe sound effects, and some nice ambient background music in each area. Now so far as my recommendations go, I think those who have never played an Abe game should definitely consider picking up New and Tasty, and fans of the original should also give it a look if only to check out the game's added content. For a rating between 1 and 5 stars, I'd give New and Tasty 3 out of 5 stars. It's a good remake that captures all of what was great about the original and expands upon it whilst giving it a lick of paint in the process. You can get New and Tasty from the UK Switch eShop for £26.99 or from the US eShop for $29.99. The next game in this roundup is Space Crew, a strategic survival simulation game which is a sequel to 2017's Bomber Crew. The game is set in 2152, and you are tasked with commanding a crew of astronauts aboard a spaceship which forms part of the United Defence Force, whose mission is to defend Earth from the invasion of a mysterious alien threat known as the Phasmids. Now the game kicks things off with a very basic mission involving the repair of a communications array by the moon which gives you an introduction to the basic game mechanics in Space Crew. You basically get to command a crew of six people, each of which are specialised in a particular type of job aboard the ship. 
You have gunners manning the ship's weapon systems, a navigator who tracks targets, an engineer who manages the ship's reactor, and the captain who gives orders to the crew, telling them how to pilot the ship and when to engage the warp drive. Now to begin with, things start off relatively tame, with some simple missions involving the transportation of supplies or the investigation of phasmid activity. But things quickly become more difficult as you navigate from planet to planet, and after fend off attacking phasmid forces, attempting to take them out before they destroy you or board your ship. Quickly reacting to changes in situations is key to being successful in space crew, and you have to learn how to handle your crew efficiently in order to maintain the order of your ship and fend off incoming attacks. Each successful mission awards your crew with experience increasing the level, which in turn unlocks new abilities for them to use whilst aboard the ship. You also earn a bunch of credits which can then be spent on new equipment to increase your crew's defence and resistances, or on upgrading your ship which can improve its armour, shields, engine and weapon systems. Now I'm not going to lie, I personally found space crew very difficult to handle even in the early game, and I think this was primarily due to the game's complex control scheme coupled with granular game mechanics. Not only do you have to manage the movement of your ship and locking onto enemy targets, you also have to monitor and manage the level of your ship's shields, manually adjusting the generator power at the expense of the ship's gravity generator or firepower, and manually move crew members between stations and weapons, or task them with putting out fires, healing teammates, or fighting off invading phasmid forces who have managed to board your ship. To do all of these things though, you have to go through the slow process of cycling through crew members using the left thumbstick whilst holding the B button, and then manually command them with an on-screen cursor which is always an arduous process. Throughout my time playing, I found I was frequently overwhelmed, even against small groups of enemies in the early game, and the game has no difficulty settings to make things easier for you. Even worse is the fact that when you lose your crew members, you have to recruit new ones which start with no equipment, and you also lose most of your ship's upgrades, and I was often left with no money to buy new ones. Overall though, Space Crew's not a bad game. It has a lot of depth to it and plenty of interesting game mechanics and a ton of replayability. For a rating between 1 and 5 stars, I'd give Space Crew 3 out of 5 stars. Having to manage complex gameplay mechanics with a somewhat awkward control system just led to frustration and meant I didn't really enjoy the game as much as I could have. But I'm sure there are plenty of people out there who will enjoy the game and likely find it much easier to get to grips with. You can get Space Crew from the UK Switch eShop for £17.99 or from the US eShop for $19.99. Our third and final game of this roundup is Hyper Brawl Tournament, a sports brawler game where two teams of two players take to the arena and compete in Hyper Brawl, a violent combination of handball and martial arts, with a deadly arsenal of weapons thrown in there for good measure. If you've ever played the game Speedball on Mega Drive, then Hyper Brawl follows a similar concept. Now the game features two different modes. First, there's an arcade mode which can be played with up to four human players, and this mode lets you select any of the game's arenas to play in, each of which has its own layout and obstructions which affect gameplay in different ways. You then get to select your two heroes to make up your team, and each hero has a different set of stats such as health, speed and attack strength and I personally found it was best to have one meathead to do all the brawling with, and a smaller faster character to go after the ball with. Now after selecting your characters, you then get to select a weapon for each of them, and there's a bunch of different weapons in the game which add some good variety to gameplay. These include things like a sword which enables you to perform a spin attack, and a heat seeking mine which locks onto enemy players and blows them up. But they also include a couple of utility items, like a portable wall and a magnet tool which attracts the ball to you. Now games in Hyper Brawl consist of 4 rounds in offline mode and 3 rounds in online mode, each round lasting a minute and a half, and the objective of course is to get the ball into your opponent's goal whilst defending your own. When not in possession of the ball, you can perform a short ranged punch move and a kick move which leaps you forward a short distance, and you're also able to activate your weapon when it's charged. Performing attacks will eventually knock an enemy out, making them drop the ball, but as both you and your opponents receive damage, you'll build Hyper Force, which can then be unleashed, enabling you to KO your opponents in one hit. Now, when you have possession of the ball, you're able to pass between the players, and when playing single player mode, by default this will switch you to the player holding the ball. 
the other player will then be controlled by the computer, and I found that their AI was a bit hit and miss. Sometimes they'd walk after an opponent with a ball instead of swiftly moving back to the goal to defend, and it was very rare for them to actually move into space so that you could pass the ball to them. Now when taking a shot in the game, you press and hold the ZR button to put more force behind your throw, and at full force the ball will KO any player it hits, including you if you're unlucky or just an idiot like me. Shooting in Hyper Brawl also features some pretty unique mechanics, whereby you're able to steer the ball around players and obstacles after you've thrown it, allowing for some pretty awesome goals. And you can also ricochet the ball off the arena's walls and objects into your opponent's goal. Now in addition to arcade mode, you also have campaign mode, where you can take part in the Hyper Brawl Galaxy League, facing off against other teams to earn points, much like the Football Premier League. Completing matches moves you around the league table, and also earns you XP which levels you up, unlocking additional characters for you to play as. Leveling up also earns you credits, which can be spent on artifacts, a sort of loot crate which unlocks new character and weapon skins. Now as mentioned before, the game also features an online mode, and surprisingly I was able to find a match after only a short wait, so maybe for once the online community for a game is alive and well on Switch. In all, I had a fun time playing Hyper Brawl Tournament. The controls take a little bit of getting used to, especially with the shooting, and I will say that the game is way more fun when you're actually playing with two players and not having to control and monitor the whereabouts of other team members. I think my only real criticism of the game would be with the camera distance from the arena, which sometimes makes it hard to keep track of the ball. For a rating between 1 and 5 stars, I'd give Hyper Brawl Tournament 4 out of 5 stars. It's great hectic fun and I'm looking forward to playing it with friends next time I host a gaming night. You can get Hyper Brawl Tournament from the UK Switch eShop for £19.99 or from the US eShop for $24.99. And so that's it for this October Roundup. Let me know what you thought of the games featured in it and whether you're going to be picking up any of them in the comments section below. As always, hit that like button if this video helped you out, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for future reviews and Nintendo Switch content. For now though, I just want to thank you all once again for watching, and until next time, take care and game on.